back now for you. This is Bondalay. I know I ought to come around today. To see your daughter, she's rather young and sweet. I'd like to be your daughter. She's so young. I'm just a butcher down the street. She's holding all stage. I'll let her up some meat. And show me saucy, cause she's young and sweet. I'd like to be your daughter. Come on, sweet, no bad. No, no wine, no food. I never drew. But she could make me lick me lips. But she's so young, I won't use tongue. I'll just wait for me fish and chips. This is on delay. I know I ought to come around today. To see your daughter, she's rather young and sweet. I'd like to be your daughter. Come on, little girl. Sausage in a bun. It's too late. We already had the sausage in a bun bit. Oh. That was Phil Pulling, ladies and gentlemen, with Mrs. Tondelay, one of the greatest songs ever written by mankind. Welcome, everybody, that can hear the sound of my voice to this week's edition to the Scotch World Podcast, where we have abandoned any semblance of Bigfoot and instead of focusing on supernatural, true crime, and general interest stories. Joining me, as always, from the swamps of Louisiana, Chubbs. Greetings to everyone. And from Tennessee, Nikki. Hey. And from Washington State, Phil. Ditto. Hey. And from Northern Ireland, Kevin. Hello, everybody. And if you enjoy the lads and the ladette, you may enjoy the badly drawn misadventures of two Bigfoot. Head on over to Facebook and Bigfoot and with Keith Collin. After two weeks of most excellent cartoons, this week we're going to explore deer magic and uh, what happens when Keith and Colin go on a mountain trip adventure. Coming up this week on Bigfoot and with Keith and Colin, let's hear it for Deadfoot MVP. Speaking of yeah. Deadfoot, the relic of the bull's idea was Nikki's. So full credit to her for the Ready with the Bulls tune that everyone loved. Oh, okay. Seriously. Just I said silent, thank bro. you. I said yay. No, I was Dead talking Foot. to the I was talking to my co-host who was supposed to go well done, Nikki. Well oh, done. Well, well done, Nikki. Awesome. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, Good job, Nikki. <laughs> I'm the best. <laughs> we'll be like that, that. Don't, don't, don't be like that, no. I, you know, sometimes we say stuff and then you say it's too soon. So, you know, I didn't want to, you know. Yeah, I That would have been great. Off. You guys would have been I, like, congrats. And he would have been like, too soon, guys. Well, no, I, would, <laughs> too I, soon. I don't, I don't want to pre-congratulate. I just want to do it for and, ego, whatever you do. And I'm, I just want to sit here and, and hate. I just didn't want to cut to the, you know, front of the line. I was, you know, waiting for someone else to, you know, chime in there first. Yeah. Congratulations. Thanks. You see, now I stepped all over him. Without further ado, I am your host, Richard Judas Allen, and let's get on with it. Our first story is about the Myrtle Plantation and Chubbs' adventures here in To Within. Take it away, Chubbs. Okay. Well, first, little in case it's a trigger warning, some of this has to do with the antebellum South, but. Here's the, the short, short version. The Myrtle's Plantation in St. Francisville, which is 30 miles north of Baton Rouge. In 1796, General David Bradford uh, acquired the house in what was called the Whiskey Rebellion. When he passed away, he gave it to his daughter, Sarah, and her husband, Clark Woodford. They had a head mistress named Chloe, and upon her... Being caught eavesdropping, uh, they hung her from the chandelier in the house, and they cut off her left ear. 
Um, but before they hung her, she got a little bit of revenge and she wanted to just poison the family. She put oleander in the cake, but it backfired and she happened to kill the two daughters, Jane and Mary. Um, they, after she was hung, they threw her body in the river. Now, you cut to the current day and the plantation house is sometimes known as the most haunted house in the country. Sometimes it falls lower on the list, but some of the main things seen, they have a main mirror in the hall and there's handprints that never disappear no matter how much they clean it. I've seen this mirror and it is true. Um, there's a grand piano in one of the rooms that plays by itself. And many of the workers there feel small children pulling at their clothes and they turn around and nobody's there. Now, if you fast forward to 2008, around July, uh, me and my wife went in the re they redid the slave quarters. And in the middle of the night, I went out for a cigarette and I saw something in the pitch blackness. I went back and told my wife, I said, hey, this is going to sound crazy, but it looked like two little girls in white dresses dancing. And we laughed it off. Now, a year later, we were watching the History Channel and I said, oh, look, a special in the plantation house. And the host of the show said, and I quote, many people see the ghost of Chloe and the two daughters often dancing in the courtyard. I never heard oh, cool. that story before, and we both turned white, and uh, it's just, so you can maybe say coincidence, but, uh, oh, and also, when we left the next morning, the ghost seemed to st steal my reading glasses, and I never found them since, but I, I saw something that later was clarified on a TV show about the plantation, and it's it's still spooky when I say it because I, I literally have not heard that story. So that is that that's to me my big ghost story. So what do y'all think? Well, I, I had a question now. Was the maid hung because she was eavesdropping or because she poisoned the two girls? Oh, it was they cut off her ear first for eavesdropping and then when they figured out she was poisoning them, they hung her. Ah, uh, I got it. Yeah. That was going to be my question, too, was the hanging from the... Yeah. So... And... Go, ahead. go ahead. No, I was just going to say, if you go online, there's still uh, videos and pictures that... Because there's... You can sleep in the house or in the quarters. It's a tourist destination. But there was, as recent as, like, two months ago, in broad daylight, there was... It looks like a little girl in a white dress running across the driveway. Now, I didn't look into that photo. It could have been video. It could have been somebody made that up. But I can tell you my story because I knew nothing of that tale. And, you know, it was cemented later on. And that that was just so it still freaks me out. <laughs> when, when you were when you looked outside, when you, you were outside having that smoke and you looked out into what you call the pitch blackness. Now, mm -hmm. there, were, there were no street lights or anything like that around or. No, the the it's heavily wooded for about an, an acre squared around the property. And then there's like one lane roads with really no street lights. And so. <clears throat> Couldn't have been any artificial light. So it was kind of like what you saw were two white figures or illuminations of some kind? What, what? It looked like if two little girls in white dresses were just going in a circle dancing. And I just, that's what I could make out. It wasn't very bright. It looked like if two girls were to have done it and were doing it and I could barely, that's what I could see. And I can tell you that. When you sleep there, everybody, you go as, you know, everybody's a whole group. So there was no children present that I could have mistaken. And so, what would the two children be out dancing around in the pitch black darkness anyway? Right. Yeah, I've, I've uh, you know, uh, it's an interesting, interesting thing with um, these, these things. Now, could you, 
the the question that I always ask whenever I'm dealing with people who see ghosts <clears throat> is, did you think that they were temporal? In other words, do you think that they could assess the fact that you were there, or were they were they acting like a uh, like a, uh, a a tape recording, like like they were like they were doing that? Um, regardless of what your stimuli was, you're talking about words, residual. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking. I'm talking about the fact that you know. In other words, were they? You think that they were aware of you being there or your presence, or just? No, I. They. They had no. They would would have no idea I was there. Okay. Yeah. See, I tend to like them stories the best. You know, where where it's a, it's a it's a sort of a. A, a, a tape, uh, like a, a like a memory, yeah, of right? Grind, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, like past uh, events I, breaking into our time, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, it's a playback. Um, because I don't, I don't believe in cognitive ghosts myself. I, I just don't think that they, that uh, there is such a thing as a, a spirit that is a uh, that understands that they have, they have. Uh, I mean, they they have no reasoning skills. They have no communication skills. I I don't believe in any of the that that passing over and talking to us stuff. You know, I just don't. I am um, that now. What you're talking about though is uh, is very common. Uh, so I, I think that's a, that's a real deal. The the way I think about like ghosts and especially as an atheist is that like energy and matter or how that's whatever the law of thermodynamics like energy can't be created or destroyed mm -hmm. like our essence or what maybe religion calls the soul has to do something and maybe when something violent happens it gets trapped and like they don't know it and i just happen to breach what they do on their own you know yeah, yeah. like energy takes different forms and right when our energy passes away it turns into a different form of energy type of thing right well, there was that one person who came up with the idea that a soul weighed what was it an eighth of an ounce? Yeah, that's 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 BS, yeah. by the way. <laughs> that, that's that's not. Well, well, I'm not saying it's true, but yeah. I, mean, I, I, mean, I don't know who I don't know who it was. It, it's been passed around so many years. Yeah, well, that's was, like the, that's like the God helmet. Remember that one? Yeah. Well, the but but the God helmet, in a way, right? Um, if, if I would believe that that actually could work. You could you that you could stimulate parts of your brain to make you believe that you were having a out of you know either a, a religious experience or an out of body experience or something. Yeah. Like that. I knew somebody who took that isolation tank thing, and uh, that seemed to do it for him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they they say when you pray, it's almost like when you take a drug, like it's euphoric. Right. No matter what you think is happening, like if it's spiritual or not, like your brain is reacting. Right. So, you know, and, you know, some people see auras. So maybe right. some people are more in tune, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a thing. Well, meditation, though, meditation, if you, if you look about why is praying necessary or why people come up with prayer. And as an atheist, I found that uh, the best meditation that I could find is I have to go back to my Catholic roots. If you say the rosary, if you're in a quiet place and you say the rosary over and over again, you go into a state of, you go into that state. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's and you use whatever that you're used to. I mean, you can count from one to a hundred slowly and take a deep breath and then count backwards again to get into that state, to tap in supposedly to the positive aura around the earth. Um, or you could do something that you are familiar with, like the rosary was my was my thing. So that's what I did, even you, though I'm an atheist. But, you know, you, you know, it's funny. Um, I'm in the Catholic South and people would ask from other like who don't know why we do the rosary. They're like, why do you keep repeating everything? And I said, well, it's to get your mind. You're like, you're not concentrating on that. Like you said, you're getting set in a way so yeah. you can relax. Yeah, it's, it's a not mantra. that. Yeah, but a lot of people are like, why y'all repeat everything down there? I'm like, well, it's too, you're not like concentrating on that. So, yeah, yeah you're right. It's just, a, it's, a, it's a shamanic state. I mean, for lack of a better word, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who you are, where you're from or whatever. 
uh, you're entering into uh, a shamanic state or an out-of-body experience or whatever using repetition or dance or that's why Buddhists hum right. when they when they yeah. sit down and their thing. I mean, or you can use or you can use drugs or whatever. <laughs> I mean, the the, 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 the peyote. Well, yeah. The, the but the state of the matter is is that over time, this is what this is. I mean, I know people get pissed at me for saying that, but I mean, I've studied a lot of different shamanic groups and repetition um, without or putting yourself into these trance like states is the is the step to uh the next enlightenment and i don't care who you are i mean that's 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 basically what it comes down to so um i mean and, and people say well that means i'm a bad person for saying that but i mean obviously why <laughs> well my question to y'all would be is many people like ghost stories a lot are the same where okay it was a woman in white or you know it was this exact thing over and over again. Do y'all believe like the essence of somebody is trapped and they can't move on until they like complete something? No, no I don't I believe don't. that at all. No. no, okay, I don't. Okay, I think I think what they're saying it's I think that uh, happy or sad or overly emotional situations, traumas and stuff can kind of leave an imprint. Right um with most most things um can leave can leave an imprint that stays um i have a question for you though regarding the house sure. uh, are the girls the only ones that are haunting it or does the servant haunt it as well there are chloe is seen all over the place um any and there's no rhyme or reason it could be any time of day or night uh there's pictures people take and you'll see like what would be her like what she was wearing when she died and the two little girls seem to be the three ghosts that right now like you have like the mirror with the handprints and as i saw it and it's weird because it's very well put on the wall and the handprints are at the very top upside down so if somebody were to fake it they're going way out of their way but like the piano playing by itself and you know like the main thing is the people who work there say they always feel like they're being tugged in their clothes at a kid level. So it okay. seems to be the kids are the main thing. But Chloe will not do anything. A lot of her stories are she's there. And right. Then so she's they're not, not like anything. malevolent. No, there's, there's, uh, there's never really been like a harmful act, which, you know, I guess. could. And by the way, the the daughter of, of Woodward or uh, who was given the house when she was poisoned, she died, and that she had a baby in her when she died. So it was technically like four deaths. So, but that's just I, an added um, bonus. I can, I, I would like to uh, give an option as to how the mirror situation is. Or sure. How that could, they well, took it down and then put it back up. Well, no, I before it was hung, even oh, okay. yeah, before it was hung, someone had touched the back of the mirror and uh, and uh, back in the day they, it was coated with a with a silver oxide material, and the the acids from the human skin or the oils on the skin can eat through that. So somebody put their hand on the back of the mirror accidentally, they hung it up and it slowly ate its way ate its way through the uh, the silver oxide on the rear. I love that. That's really cool. I did yeah. not know that. Yeah, and you but, would, and you wouldn't want to tell anybody that you did it either, because like that process is so exp was so expensive. You know, whenever you say uh, people don't realize this, but you know the uh, seven the, year bad luck thing. Yeah, that's because that's it took, how it's so expensive. Yeah, it yeah, took it seven was. years to for the average worker to save up enough money to replace a mirror if they broke it. So that that's where that comes from. It's got nothing to do with the mirror itself. It's got to do with the, 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 but the other thing that's funny about it is, and a lot of people don't know that the whiskey rebellion happened uh, almost directly after the, the, the revolutionary war. And yeah. uh, it was the only time that a president ever took the field as a general and president at the same time. Did that's a history. Yeah. The general in the story was a general in the revolutionary war. Yeah. But George Washington actually acted as a general in the Whiskey Rebellion, too. That was the last. By the, the, by last the way, I just wanted to say uh, at the Myrtle's Plantation, uh, like we stayed in the, 
the redone slave quarters. They look like tiny, tiny houses, but you can stay in the main house in the room that the main people stayed in. It's four hundred dollars a night, but you can stay there. Yeah, that's really cool. There's a there's a nice little map of it. I mean, they did a good job. I mean, I'm looking at the website now, so it's a it it looks good, and they have a they have a you know they have a a menu from 1796 and all these different things. So if you want to try that, I mean, but you see, that's the thing that I think a skeptic would say is, okay, well, you're putting yourself into the situation where you're trying to eat the food that they ate and everything like that. You're probably predisposed to seeing something, which I, I don't technically believe in, um, to be honest with you. I mean, cause I think that if you're going to make up that you saw something, you're going to make it up anyway. Uh, sure. And, 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 uh, it doesn't really matter what the extra stimuli around you is, but I mean, uh, I, I've, I've, uh, I know I've been with people who've been touched by supposed, um, ghosts and things like that. Yeah. And, and, uh, and if you take a look at the situation with Colonel Chubbs here, um, he, he was outside relaxing. He was having a smoke, probably yeah. allowing his mind to wander, you know? But, and uh, it left himself open to an experience that, let's say, someone who was not as open would have experienced. Right. Yeah, um, I wasn't ghost hunting or anything. I was right. literally just taking taking a chill. You were chilling. Yeah. yeah. Did your voice there? I wasn't ghost hunting. Well, yeah, well no, yeah. I I didn't. I wanted to make it clear, like I wasn't there going. I want to see a ghost. Like I, yeah. we were there to enjoy. We ate at the restaurant, and you know, we took the tour, and then we went to bed. And I said, oh. Got up in the middle of the night. It was like two in the morning, and I'm like, "That's weird." But maybe my eyes were playing tricks. And no, that's the dang story. I heard it later. I'm like, "Oh wow." So, yeah, I th I think those are the best stories because you didn't you weren't there purposely looking for it, but yeah, I, especially especially something they've yet they've never heard of before. Right. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. yeah. we have that we are littered with plantation houses, and some can be like completely run down and just like are a couple bricks and. Some you can like Oak Alley is a big one where you people get married at for like 30 grand. And so, but some of the best stories come from some you can't even go in because they're so run down. And people say, Yeah, I saw a lantern go off the roof. And the story of that plantation is somebody jumped to their death off the roof. So it's really interesting, but we're littered with so many of them. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a sad, I mean, it's, a, you know, from, from, from a perspective of a lot of people, it's a sad time in American history and, and, and therefore, you know, that kind of divulgent wealth, uh, uh seems to always lead to these stories, you know, where, where it's, uh, it, I mean, you can it, it is sad because they're very beautiful, by the way, some are yeah. so beautiful and you're like, oh, but then you realize like their history and you're like, man, <laughs> yeah. like it's sad. That's what had to happen, but you know, we've come a long way. Yeah, well, I think that in Ireland you get you get a lot of these big, 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 huge manor houses, and although technically they didn't have slaves, I mean, you know, uh, you you find this huge disparity between landowners and and people who lived on the land, and so and, there's still a serf mentality. Is what yeah, exactly, saying. exactly. So you, you I mean, uh, and you get these, and it's all, it, and it always usually comes down to. Some guy who's the king of the manor, or king of the plantation, is skipping some lady who is working for him, and then it, it always works out that she gets it in the end. You know, it's a sad story. But, but hey, the, oh, yeah. sorry, but I'm going to ask Nikki. You you should have plantations around somewhere around you, huh? Uh, actually, not a whole lot. We have some oh. weird stuff around here, um, but no plantations. Not where I'm at. I'm I'm close to Memphis. Um, uh, so, okay. yeah, so we don't have like the cool stuff. I think the, the strangest thing that Memphis has is called voodoo village, but it's not even a voodoo village. They just had a preacher who was an artist who had a very strange eclectic, uh, idea of, of making structures and the villages around it. It's a heavily gated community. If you look it up, it's pretty cool, but yeah, they all have religious symbolism to them at least in his brain but there's really no i don't know if there's any like real haunted places around here like supposedly there are moments at at uh graceland but is that well we don't get those like you hear stories of people go they have abandoned insane asylums we don't have any of those 
So we trade off. We have plantation houses. Yeah, is that Waverly Hills? Is that in Kentucky or is that in Tennessee? Is that the next day? I'm not sure where Waverly Hills is. Let me look. What's I'm Waverly Hills? Google. That, that big, big, huge asylum that everybody says uh, it's super haunted. It's like in Kentucky. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I always hear, like, you see on TV, it's like this old abandoned insane asylum. I'm like, why do they have so many of these? I don't have any of those, but. Oh, I yeah. forgot the Orpheum Theater is haunted here. Yeah, uh, by a little before. girl. I don't know. I don't know, like, the story behind it because I don't care. I've went to the Orpheum a million times, but they. Actually, I want to say that they save a seat for her. She's got her own seat that they don't they don't give to anybody. Yeah, well, uh, we, have several, we have several. several around in our area, several haunted places. Yeah, uh, our our old Masonic lodge was supposedly haunted, and then they knocked it down to make what? the Everett Everett ever <laughs> Ah, part of the Illuminati. Uh, and yeah. and they say many movie theaters, old movie theaters, seem to always be haunted. Yeah, for some reason. The, the Everett Theater here uh, is uh, is haunted. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, what about have... you, Richard? What about me? What's around you? I live in England, man. You can't throw a brick. I, well, you gotta have haunted places <laughs> around you. <laughs> yeah, everywhere is haunted in England, man. You can't throw a brick. <laughs> we got battlefields. We got old. Sites of great tragedy. The house I'm living in at the moment, a dude hung himself. It's supposed to be haunted. Ah, ah, there you go. Four four hundred year old taverns. Pubs. Yeah, yeah. We've got uh, the Ram's Head down in Leeds. Uh, you know that's supposedly haunted by a transsexual incubi. Um, that's 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 old. <laughs> what is transsexual? <laughs> yeah, well, it's very incubi, specific. <laughs> <laughs> incubi are male versions of succubi. Incubi are ma male demons that have sex with women or the men, and female ones are succubi. So but this is other a, one. Yeah, well, according to demonology, but this is a female demon that's called an incubus. So mm -hmm. I can only assume that it's a transsexual. Ah, uh, that it's trans. Uh, also a mediocre band from the early two thousands, but that's. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Shots fired, I know. Shots fired at Incubus, but yeah. <laughs> Do you know what? You say that, but Aqueous Transmission by Incubus is one of the best songs to have sex to. Fight me. I, I like the band. I just I right. thought I'd throw that in. <laughs> I love it. I love it how people say I take topics way off the mark. Now we're talking about the best songs to have sex to. Hey, 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 I'm, I'm bringing it back. Oh, no, no, I, I anyway, understand. On the subject of ghosts, that is. I think be. I think "Stroking" by Clarence Carter would be one of the best. I'm trying to bring it back. And oh, okay. to... All right. <laughs> See, this would be an example of what we talk about, Kevin. Okay. But there is supposed to be a horse and uh, wagon, a horse and a driven, you know, one of them old buggies that goes by the road up by Hadrian's Wall. So we've got that. I've never seen it. I've uh, I've never seen anything remotely ghostly in this country. When I lived in America, I think I saw a ghost once, but there's no time to get into that. And I'll save that for another day. Oops. I saw a documentary on Spring Hill Jack, but I don't think you like that story, do you? Spring Hill Jack? Uh, it's all right. I mean, it was clearly some an early fucking free runner. Just... <laughs> Uh, hey, breathe. He breathed blue fire sometimes. That's kind of interesting. And, and his eyes, you know, if you look at yeah. his eyes. Uh, I'm far more interested in Jack the Stripper, who used to <laughs> kill people in the nude. And yeah, that's we, a real. We, we had a, a real. We had a, wait, were the people in the nude, or was he in the nude when he killed? He them? was in the nude. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, he was. Yeah, but forensically, that's a good move. I mean, yeah, I don't that's know. A good move. That's yeah. a good move. All right, yeah. 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 I well, I think that later on the idea of the tracksuit that you could wear with um you know uh, duct tape around the ankles and wrists and keeping all the body hair in was a better idea but that was a Boston thing. Hmm. A thing. Yeah, you no know, like uh, the 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 you know cuz in 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 Boston like they, they in true crime, right? You have, uh, you know, the, you had people who specialized in robbing, um, um, like armored cars. 
And that's how they got around the DNA stuff. The early DNA stuff was as they could basically duct tape themselves into their outfits and then steal uh, Pontiac uh, Pontiac vans because they had huge engines in them and then get away. What what have you been uh, drinking uh, today, uh, Kevin? Why? I, I, I it just the story just, just like <laughs> way you, you lost me, you lost me at the duct tape. I I, this, I, this I all I'm saying is this subject anyway. <laughs> no, all I'm saying is this: if you're going to commit, if you're going to commit a crime, wrap yourself in duct tape. Don't yeah, be, right. <laughs> don't be a dumbass. Yeah, don't be a dumbass. Do it right. Yeah, I, all I'm saying is uh, we've had a week and a half's worth of dumbasses. Oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, uh, can we okay. no, can that's we not. No, that's not. That's not. That's not saying anything. Yeah, I know. Just... No, I know. But this week has not been. I've been more angry this week than I have at any point during the last year. And I don't want to get into the events of the week. I'm just so annoyed about it. Yeah, yeah. So annoyed. But anyway, that will wrap up Chubbs' adventure to the Myrtle Plantation. Did he see ghosts? Ah, yes. Uh, yeah, oh, he yeah. He did okay. two of them. Two for the okay. price of one. Okay, well, that that just, you know, I was going to leave it at a mystery, but we're just going to... No, say, no, he no. did it. He did, did he it. see a ghost? He believed oh. he did. And we're all like, yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, he yeah. saw yeah. a ghost. Yep, he did. It's great. When I set you up for lines before, you don't say anything, but when I don't want you to say anything, I can guarantee <laughs> you what it's, it's, it's too early. Well, yeah, that's it's brilliant. Brilliant. Say, brilliant. He believes he did, and I believe him. That's all uh, you got the of chemistry he's a, going on. He's a, he's a, he was a credible witness. I believe him. I believe he saw something. So we'll wrap that one up with uh, Chubb saw some ghosts at the Motor Plantation, which was a Now I want to go. I'm going to have to go. Ah, uh, right. Anyway, so I'll take this moment. I'll take this moment to talk about Planet Fear, Matt Knapp's new podcast. Uh, I'm a bit mad at him because last week he did the Texarkana Phantom Killer, which was a topic I was hoping to talk about. But, you know, whatever. He's mad now. Do whatever he wants. But you can still uh, talk about it. Yeah, yeah, but now we'll look like we're copying him. Mm-hmm. No. Hey, that's See, the, the town, that, the town that dreaded Sunday. Yeah. yeah, the town. Yeah, great. And uh, next week, apparently, he's doing Death Omens. The best, easiest way to find it is on Facebook, Planet Fear Podcast. It's a good show. It's a really good show. And I can't recommend it enough. But anyway, that'll wrap up that half of the show. We move on to my topic, which is, of course, Jerry Freeman. Now, where to begin this story? Well, I guess the story begins in 1846, where a group of wagoners led by the Donners was making their way over the Nevada mountains. Of course, we've talked about this before. They got stuck in the snow and basically had a bad time. Fast forward three years later to the 40, 1849, where a wagon train led by uh, Jefferson Hunt, I believe, yeah, Jefferson Hunt, comes to the base of the Sierra Mountains, and like the Donner Party, they saw there was snow on there. So they said, ah, well, we're not going to do that because that ends with us all being dead and eating each other. So instead, let's head south and try to find a shortcut through the Nevada desert. Which, uh, I don't know. As you can imagine, this did not ha- end up being a good time for them either. It's how Death Valley got its name, was because of the San Francisco 49ers. I believe the football team is ma- named after the Miners, but, you know, Minor 49er. But this wagon train, the 49ers, is a real thing. And Jerry Freeman was uh, super interested in their journey. He liked it as much as I liked the Dollar Party. And he wanted to follow their path because they had left inscriptions behind in caches and he believed that there was still archaeological evidence of their passing. He really wanted to follow them. The problem for him was that the 49ers route uh, cut straight through a place in America called Groom Lake. Now, many of you might not know why this is a big deal. Uh, I didn't know why this was a big deal until I looked into it. (laughs) Phil knows why it's a big deal. (laughs) Kevin knows why it's a big deal. Um, This is because there's a military base on Green Point. And uh, 
not just any military base. It's known by ne many names, uh, Nellis Air Force, Edwards Air Force, Homey Airport, or Groom Lake. But the colloquial term, the one you'll be most familiar with, is Area 51. That's right. Jerry Freeman wanted to hike across Area 51, and he did it. And when I first heard this story, I thought he was full of shit. But after investigating it, there's pictures of him actually doing it. He literally snuck into one of the most secretive military bases on the planet, and he walked away almost scot-free. I believe he was detained for a certain amount of time after the military found out what he'd done. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. So go back to the beginning. Jerry Freeman, as I said, really wanted to follow the passage of the 49ers, and to his credit, he wanted to do it the right way. He had sent numerous requests to the Air Force Base Commander at Area 51, requesting that, you know, this was a part of American history, and please, oh pretty please, could he be allowed to just take a couple of people uh, down across the valley and to find the inscriptions on the canyon wall. The military base obviously rebuffed him. Uh, to this day, no one's allowed inside Area 51. Uh, you hear reports of people who used to work there apparently come up with all wild, outlandish theories. Uh, a couple of YouTubers quite recently across the the line between Nevada and Area 51 and actually went into the base and their YouTube channel went just disappeared. They were detained for like three months um, and they were forbidden to ever talk about it again. But that was that was then, that's today, and that was then. Uh, Jerry Freeman uh, snuck onto the Area 51 base and spent seven days walking across and following the 49ers. Now, he didn't find the inscription that they had left on the canyon wall. He reckons he got within a mile of it, and he had a good look around, but he couldn't find it, and obviously he had to keep moving and could only really travel at night. Um, so he did find evidence of their passing. He found an ox shoe. He found an old wagon. Uh, the remains of an old wagon, what he believed was the reins, and, you know, he found caches and stuff. But I found this incredibly fascinating. Like I said, I thought it was utter crap. And, uh, and like I said, I also had no idea that Area 51's official designation was Groom Lake Base. And when it just said military base at Groom Lake, I was like, oh, well, you know, just a military base. But this is the military base. This is the uh, the golden goose as it were. But yeah, a fascinating story about a bloke who wanted to follow a wagon trail and did. Now, did he? you say he was detained? He was detained, yeah, afterwards, I believe. Oh, oh afterwards. So he actually made it all the way through without being oh, detected. Yeah, his brother picked him up on the other side of the base. He uh, oh. hiked. <laughs> That's awesome. Can you just imagine, just like, ah, oh, no, nah, just meet me on the other side. It's fine. I'm just going to go hang out at Area 51 for a few weeks. It would be great. Well, he, he was convinced he wasn't going to make it. He had a, This was uh, early 2000s. He had a mobile phone. He actually had set up a uh, code with uh, the Sun newspaper, the Sun in Nevada, and was sending uh, journalists their text messages like 50, I'm okay at 50, meant he'd done 50% and he was okay. And the reason that they weren't able to triangulate his phone signal was because of the uh, geography of that area made it pretty much impossible to narrow it down. But he wasn't always able to use it or keep it on. But he used to go up high at night and send a text message to a journalist. Right. So he probably stayed uh, close to the north end of Groom Lake, which is a, an immense area. I mean, uh, one little soul figure crossing this this basically what it is this desert area could go undetected <clears throat> mm -hmm. well there there was lots of there's lots of subsequent places around it too i mean obviously uh <clears throat> there's a uh, on that there's a there was a uh, nuclear bomb area subsequent to the to area 51 <clears throat> excuse me and um also uh, some other other things there as well. The 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 issue with um, all these different places on there is is that if you, I mean, and actually, and a lot of people don't know this, but you know, it was actually uh, under the commission. It was under the Atomic Energy Commission first, and then it was 
given to skunk works and stuff like that to try to to try to um you know build super secret aircraft and other things other people say but uh when they took that land over there was people that, that had prospecting rights on that property that were allowed to stay there uh they just had to sign on disclosure agreements and everything like that and uh, there was a there was a prospector that actually overlooked the the runway uh for a long time but uh and and a lot of people don't know that but the thing that uh, is interesting about this is yeah you're you're right it's very very hard to uh capture one person who's walking across the desert it, it, it's just uh you know we think we we think we have uh that capability but uh it's very very hard although you will believe that area 51 has sort of seismic sensors and they could hear your footsteps uh, like that <laughs> yeah close close to uh the working areas right uh, but the groom lake area you know it's an on again off again type of an area where they may may or may not be doing something at the time right and i think also too that there was that the base itself was expanded at a certain point in time. In other words, <clears throat> people go to a certain location and film things taking off from Area 51, and then they then they move that uh, location back to a next mountain over because people were starting to take better better pictures of it. So uh, it, it is it is um, you know as with as with all things. Basically, military. The the point is not that you don't know it's there, and uh, it, but it's the the point is you can't determine what it you know why they're there. Right. But, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, there's a, a prevailing theory on Reddit is that the military were well aware that he was there and were watching him, but as long as he because they knew why he was there, as long as he didn't go somewhere where he wasn't supposed to, they were just going to let him do his yeah. work. Because they well, couldn't officially give him permission. But yeah. as long as he was, a, it's just a harmless archaeologist that they were keeping an eye on him. But as long as he didn't go where he wasn't supposed to, they let him pass. Well, yeah. since you mentioned that he was going high at night to get some uh, reception, uh, it sounds like he was hugging the side of the mountain range that runs through there. Well, that's where the 49ers went. Remember, they ended up in Death Valley. That's where they get yeah. the name. Uh -huh. so well, that, yeah. Uh huh. So that explains it. Well, plus you can use that. Plus you can use any story as a disinformation story. I mean, this is this is the this is the key thing that you get behind sort of Roswell. What what was it? Is it is it a disinformation story? Is it the truth? No, I mean nobody. Well, knows. yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? You know, you can't tell for sure if they knew or not if he was there, or if that's just something they say. Oh yeah, we knew he was there. We just don't care. Yeah, you know, it's a way of saving face, but. You know, he, he did spend seven days in Area 51. I thought it was a hoax when I first read about it, but does he, he was halfway through a book. He had pictures and everything, but he died of prostate cancer no. in uh, the early 2000s. No. That was you, the death ray. <laughs> you, mentioned, uh, you mentioned that he did find some stashes of items. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he found what he rem believes to be the remains of a wagon. He found an ox shoe. And since he was pretty convinced that no other, no one else had brought wagons through that area of Nevada because it's a desert, why would you? I mean, they would have been better off going over the bloody mountains. What were they thinking? Yeah, I'm just wondering what, uh, you know, uh, the Borax um, people would run, <clears throat> you know, mules through there with the, not not through there specifically, but I'm just wondering how close uh, the Borax people were to that area that you're talking about and maybe he was looking at something that was left over by them you know the 20 mule team borax you know they yeah. go through death valley yeah yeah but no it was an oh, it was it was a, it was an ox shoe it was very specific okay. that it came from oh. an ox. and he did find the remains of a wagon i mean obviously it was badly degraded um but he's got oh. pictures he's got pictures of him inside area 51 yeah and well what's the name of the book it never got finished. He died before it was finished. Ah, is, is any part of the, this online were photos or anything? Uh, yeah. If you just search Jerry F Freeman, Area 51, you'll find the pictures. Of okay. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, um, because, like, as I said, I was convinced it was a hoax, but he did it.
he snuck inside one of the most secretive military. And, uh, you know, you brought the Borax mules and obviously I've glazed over a huge part of the whole 49ers tragic tale because we could do a whole podcast on that. Similar to the Donner Party, they really had a bad time of it. But there was no cannibalism. So, you know, they, they learned from... So it wasn't as awesome as... <laughs> it wasn't as a horrific it tale. Wasn't, it wasn't as a massive fail as the Donner Party. But here's another weird thing. The Donner Party is everywhere. And the, the San Francisco 49 and Death Valley wagon train, you know, you have to really work hard to find information about it. Unless you went to American schools, because... Oh, did you learn about this? Yes. Ah, what about the 49ers? Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I understand that, but I mean, but we, we just talk about Sutter's Mill, and that's why, uh, you know, the guy finds it at Sutter's Mill that everybody starts coming out to California. <laughs> but you don't really, um, I mean, it, it seems to me, uh, I don't know what you were taught as far as history teaching. I'm just trying to think about whatever I was teaching by then. But um, yeah, but that gets very compressed. You know. Oh yeah, it was, a lot uh, of American history gets very compressed. Yeah, you're looking at all the different <laughs> paths that uh, that the people took uh, from the east to west, um, and then it's just a cursory thing uh, over some of the tragedies that had happened. Some of them involving mountain men and so forth, and uh, but they they never go into detail. I mean, no. You know, in, in school, it was just a cursory. Well, this train went here. Uh, they nearly died because of the heat, and these people yeah. ate each other. And well, it seems like you run. It seems like, to be honest with you, as a person who has taught, what happens is is that you get bogged down in the in the Revolutionary War, then you get bogged down again in the Civil War. Civil War, yeah, that takes forever. And then after that, it's like. Okay, I've got to make it to the end of the year. Nobody's paying attention anyway. Right. I mean, you, no one wants to hear about the Reconstructionist uh, era, you know. <laughs> Let's talk Jim Crow. Right. You know, I want to talk about that. <laughs> this yeah. is all pre-Civil War stuff. Yeah. Yeah. No. Well, Reconstruction I, was after, you know. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, is that, you know, there's a you know there's there's a wee bit of a a funny thing in there you know because of the fact that that technically you know that that wasn't i mean when was when the mexican american war was was pretty much like 10 years before the civil war there was obviously there was still time where part of those people were still spanish speaking mm -hmm. mexicans in that area yeah, that's and they right were, they wouldn't have thought that the war was over. I mean, you know, yeah. it's like, Los, just, An Los Angeles was, was, a, was uh, yeah. basically Spanish. Yeah. I uh, didn't the main that. highway was the El Camino Real. It ran right through it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's in the, one of the major battles happened there. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a funny thing about American history that a lot of people don't realize that California at that time, was very, very transitional in the fact that I think that California was still recognized by them as being part of Mexico and Oregon and Washington were still recognized by Canada or British, the British, uh, America. Right. Right. As being part of Canada. Yeah. yeah. Well, they had the fur trade right up to Columbia, so yeah. they owned it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it, but you know, that's one of those things where, you know, it's, it, obviously whenever you get into history can be interesting i mean if you just if we just pause for a moment and just uh, see why things are happening and where and the, and the timeline uh yeah. you know there's there's a lot of fascinating stuff that you can that you can examine it, yeah. it's well, there if you just want to look at it yeah we're living in an area that will be no doubt covered by school children in the future right now i mean this right endemic thing is definitely going to be remembered yeah. You know, regardless of how much you believe of it is true or not, and yeah, it's, it's on how it's going to be remembered. Remember, yeah. it's, uh, you know, history is always uh, rewritten by the victors, right? Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Well, that is not true, Phil. Okay, because you lost the War of eighteen twelve, and America gets torn. See, there's a see, right there, right there. <laughs> Yeah, but we didn't. We didn't have. To, we didn't have to win the battles, and we didn't have to win a war. We just had to to wait you out. Yeah. Well, who who won? You the lost. You surrendered. 
Wrong. No. <laughs> wrong. James Madison surrendered. Yeah, but that was a mistake. He he he, oh. he, he took it back later. It was uh, an accident. This, this is a, this is an example of the losers rewrite. He had he it. had the thing. He had his fingers crossed behind. He did his behind back. his back. Everybody, everybody knows that that's that is the way it is. <laughs> Had my fingers crossed, British people. <laughs> Doesn't count. Ancient Chinese secret. Huh? He just he just <laughs> surrendered. He just <laughs> he just surrendered the corporation, not the country. Oh right, okay. Well, I'm, I'm glad that we're all on the same page as this be the War of eighteen twelve that America lost. Anyway, back to Jerry Freeman. I just I find this incredibly interesting for several reasons, and primarily because this is arguably we're talking about history. The uh, Death Valley Forty Nine ers is a piece of American history that archaeologists are being denied access to. So maybe this guy who had tried to follow the rules, who tried to do it the right way, was just did the American thing, which was you know I'm going to fight this and I'm going to do it anyway. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's a very American thing I've noticed. Yeah, just yeah. go for it. <laughs> just yeah, go no, for it. Do it, and uh, you know, do it, and ask ask for forgiveness after. That's right. It's uh, better to ask for permission after it. forgiveness. Yeah. Yeah. And it's I, like, I, well, wait a minute. I, wait, wait. My chart was must have been off. I I, I must have accidentally. Yeah. Here? yeah. <laughs> as, uh, see, see, but I have to say that as a British, as a person who was raised in Britain, I'm I'm I mean I'm American and British, but anyway. And and as as Richard would say, that's almost uncomprehensible to somebody like like us. Like you know, like we wouldn't have asked. We like we wouldn't have gone cap in hand to the masters first and said, "Can we do this? You know, can we please go? May I please this? have some more?" Well, I mean, that's how we were raised. You know what I mean? And so therefore, uh, you know, I don't think it's like that now. But I mean, you know, but. It, you know, when I, when I was growing up 50 years ago, that was definitely how it was. It was like, this is your place, and you ask for permission. And if you don't like it, you know, whereas, you know, whereas I think, um, I think Americans have always had that sort of, uh, you know, it's like, screw you, I'm going to do it's it. It's the rebellion spirit, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I'm a fan of this guy, you know. I'd like to think that, you know, if I was that passionate about something, that I would, I would just do it and uh, yeah. screw the consequences. I mean, as I said, he was arrested and detained by the military, but only for two weeks. Only um, two weeks. Well, well, if you think about it, well, how how long was um, what's that cat's name? You know, Bob Lazar, supposedly. Well, let's not get into it. No, but I'm saying he was supposedly detained for a long, long time. Sure. I mean, well, I mean, I'm not saying that he's a real person as far as that goes, but I'm just saying, um, you know, he was supposedly uh, detained for that. You would think that you would go on to that and you would sort of. I could see, I could see, you know, how his story after getting on Coast to Coast AM with Art Bell would would possibly perk up some ears to the point where they might send you know the men in black you know a couple of guys guys in gray suits over and knock on his door and ask him a few questions and he's just say oh that's all bullshit i was just making it up and then they leave i, I can see that happening yeah yeah, yeah. but i think talking about jerry freeman and bob lazar who no i know they're yeah. not the same people but i'm just no, saying uh, phil i was asking phil who he was talking about but uh, lazar oh okay yeah, you know, the, the hoaxer, think, <laughs> the liar. No, I, right. I yeah, think Lazar, Lazar, Lazar uh, you know, obviously, um, he know, you know, he knows how to work people. You know, whereas yep. if this guy, if this, if if this guy here is just like I'm, I'm going across here and writing a book. It doesn't really matter. You know, this other stuff was going on in the background, and I don't really care about it. You know, that's that's something. That's yeah, the cool. book was about the whole journey, like right. this whole following all the 49ers. The only reason he got picked up was because he snuck into Area 51. That's the only reason he got a publishing deal. Yeah. But he was already writing a book about following it. He was really passionate about it. Yeah, yeah he, he'd found all the other inscriptions. He'd followed the, uh, the ill-fated journey of... Because they were another example of people that just 
should have really stopped taking shortcuts. I mean, well, maybe he should have taken a Geiger counter with him too, so he didn't pick up all this radioactive fallout and get himself cancer and die. You know. Or, yeah, but I don't think you can do that. Nevada. I honestly don't think you could do that, in Nevada. I mean, look at all them people that. I mean, they were letting nuclear bombs off like within view of Las Vegas. You know what I mean? It, yeah, it, oh, yeah, you could see it from Las Vegas. Yeah, yeah, and and all them people in Utah, the Dine Winders, and everything like. I mean, you know, they still have a huge in St. George and those places like that. Huge amount of sort of uh, radioactive issues that go there. I mean, so yeah, if you scrape down if you scrape down uh, more than a few inches, yeah, you're going to come across something. Yeah. And so I, I, I mean, it's, uh, but, but then again, I don't think people realize how large a map section is. If you're talking about a military section of a map, in other words, in order to say area 51, you're not talking about, you know, Seattle, you're talking about a huge swath of the state. Oh yeah. It's huge. Yeah. And no, I didn't realize that until he started talking about it. Cause when I think about bases, I think about, you know, the bases that I've, I've lived in being a, a Navy brat, which aren't that big. Yeah. But you're They're not that big at all, but I'm talking about a base, not necessarily, you know. Yeah. You're yeah. talking, you're talking about a, a huge swath of land where they did, uh, uh, you know, energy and nuclear testing and then bomb ranges and all these other places that are there. Starports, yeah. yeah. And, and it's just massive. I mean, it's a huge portion of the state. And so real, realistically, he couldn't have done it without going away around with, like, without trying to do it the way he did it. If you were going to try to be accurate at all. Right. Well, well, more than likely, it's it's exactly what Reddit says. I could see the military just being like, you know what, this guy, he's been bugging us forever with these letters, and he just just let him go. Yeah. <laughs> like, just, uh, I could buy because it is such a top secret area that they had eyes on him the whole time. Yeah. And as long as he just didn't go where he wasn't welcome, they were just going to let him live his dream. I could see that. Like, this sure. guy is obviously not going to Which, go which way is he headed? Well, he's headed west. Oh, okay. And he's at the he's at the north end. Okay. And he's got a backpack on and a tent. Okay. No yeah. big deal. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's not He's not trying to wake, make his way across the, the submarine pad at Fanger. You know? Right. He's not anywhere near where we're worried about him being. So just... He hasn't got a Geiger counter and a tinfoil hat. <laughs> He's not our guy. And the CEO's looking out there. Says, hey, that's the guy. That's the guy <laughs> that called me on the phone. Yeah, that's the guy. What guy? Uh, you know, I, 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 want, I want to believe that's true. I want to believe that there's that much compassion that they were just like, okay, just let him. We'll, well, we'll deal with him they're, afterwards. They're, they're people, too. I mean, come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. And, and it is an American thing. So, yeah, that is the story of Jerry Freeman and Groom Lake. E, aka Area 51. Good Rich. job there, Richard. That was awesome. I can't I'm... believe that I didn't know Area 51 was called Groom Lake. I didn't know that either. I actually it composed seems... a piece of music called Groom Lake. Mm. Chubbs, hmm. do you have anything to add before we wrap up? <clears throat> um, I think it's a <clears throat> good example of the adventurous spirit that we can't, you know, discover things unless we're looking for them. So, uh, and I, I've never heard of the story tool. You brought it up for the show. So that's not something we were taught around here. Nah. So, right. Yeah. I, I'd never heard of the Freeman story. The other one I did, but I, I had no idea that uh, their trail is being followed by this guy. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a nice little story. When I heard about it, I felt like I, I wanted to talk about it. So excellent. Excellent. That'll wrap us up for next week. Nikki, you're up to bat. What do you want to talk about next week? I didn't even think about what I wanted to talk about next week. Well, what's something you like? I don't like anything. That's a lie. I don't know. Uh, I'll surprise everybody Saturday with a topic. <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> no. Well, given the amount of research I did for this week's show, that should work out fine. Exactly, same, yeah. <laughs> To oh, no. be determined for next week, then. Nikki TBT. TBD. Nikki TBD. will surprise us all. We're going to talk about whatever Nikki wants to talk about. And we're also going to talk about the awesome dancing plague in Strasbourg, France. Yeah, dancing week. plague. All oh, right. 
<laughs> it's a good polka polka polka. <laughs> it's a it's a weird little tale, but I enjoy talking about it. So all right, that wraps up for Wednesday this week. We will return next week, despite the hopes of many. It's good night from me, and it's good night from the lads and lad it. Good night. Kill Mumbles! Mumbles is already cute. Hit it! Can I help but drive to this tune? Actually, that, that sounds like me the last time I was ordering a pint. Ray <laughs> Abbey. I think I walked up to the bar and I said, hey, I'm sorry. Then you just shit yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely. And it was one of those black Guinness shits. He needs to, he needs to sound so like Kevin shits around the world. Yes. <laughs> I, I just go, go sucks. sucks.